So who's Codex? What do we do? Um, we're not typically in the Final Cut Pro world, but going through production, you know, how does the media wind up on your you know, network attached storage, you know, on a drive? How does it get to you? Um, that's really where Codex comes from. We're an OEM manufacturer that makes recorders for the primary main cameras in the marketplace. Airy, we make the recorder for the Airy Alexa XT and the Alexa 65 and their new SXTW. Uh, we also make the recorder for the Vericam Pure and the Canon C700. So we deal with these raw workflows. Um, the term raw is a little misused from time to time. People tend to think their original files are raw. Um, that's not what it means. Um, color space is not raw. Raw is basically the minimally touched sensor data that comes off of a camera, just like when we had film and we actually had a negative. That was our master. In this case, um, our original files are both raw. They could be in multiple different color spaces. Um, but we manage it through a tool called Codex Production Suite. What we do is we make an end-to-end -end daily solution. So our F job is to basically record the media record the material onto the media, then back up that media, get it onto two redundant copies, maybe a long-term archive, and then put it into a deliverable format dictated by the editor. Now you might say, just send me the original files because I can drop red files in, I can drop these stuff into my timeline, but will your timeline play back uh, Lexus 65 footage? Probably not. So in this case, we can make a deliverable right from those master files into ProRes, for instance, to go in with color baked in, with sound applied, everything ready to go for the editorial process and still deliver you the raw file that if supported through Final Cut, you can drop in and be able to go back and forth like you know we saw earlier today with the automatic proxy creation. But having a system set up where on a daily basis, we're taking the material and we're adding the sound and adding metadata. This is something we do with Codex Production Suite. It's a complete media management system. It'll work with multiple cameras all together. You don't have to separate them out or bin them into separate locations. You can for the setup, but it has a very powerful search tool on there where you can just search by roles. And where I used to spend a lot of time prepping materials and putting them into proper bins and get everything ready so I knew where my assets were. It's quite easy on the system to be able to find those, uh, search them out, group them, and then put them into your timeline. We have tools for media check and clip history, and what that means is we can actually take a capture drive out of camera and tell you if the media is good before you even do anything with it. If there are any you know, CRC errors, any kind of problems, we detect those right away. We have high-speed cloning, so when you have to move in production, where now on a typical production daily basis, people are generating five to 15 terabytes of data, we need something to move the data over uh, uh, very quickly and to also still make our dailies in the same night. So Codex has a, a, the platform itself can run on the Mac OS platform where we have dedicated Linux hardware and you get the performance scale accordingly. Um, it's pretty impressive what you can do on the current new Mac laptop um, with the Thunderbolt 3. We're showing cloning and transferring at around 1600 megabytes per second while we're still able to work in the foreground and play back every raw files with a lookup table applied. So we have a very powerful QC and review tool. So this is an important step in the production side. Um, you know, you might get your paper list from production of the notes for the editor and your scripty notes, and then you get, you know, some additional information that's all separated out. We have a system that allows us to put that metadata into a common platform and track it all the way through so that we can manage this data through the editorial process, and when you're done with your cut, be able to reconform and apply that metadata back into the scenes. Very important because a lot of tools like, like Resolve and other daily systems truncate lots of metadata. They'll pass along for you the in and out and source duration and maybe the clip name, but a lot of the other stuff that may have been useful for the visual effects side of the world or uh, the distribution side with that metadata can track through your entire cut. So this is the metadata editing section. I can update role scene and take information, um, get those and make sure it's actually already in the file so you can come in. Uh, we can restripe camera, camera time code. The earlier demonstration today, you had the mix of red along with uh, GoPro material, but every time I went to the GoPro material, it's a different time code. So now if I'm doing a show on a procedural basis, I wanna know this camera roll, 
with the GoPro should be at the same hour as my other camera. You can load the stuff in there and assign time code to it automatically and then carry that through and that becomes your new master. So things like importing a CDL, a CDL is a, basically like an EDL for color. It's bringing along color information that may have been generated on set, either in camera, through you know, Aries own look tools or um, lots of what we call digital imaging technicians that work on set with the DP, they'll have tools, and there's a very popular one, Pomfret Live Grade, where they'll set just 10 numbers. They create a CDL, and then they can export that, and we can track that all the way through. It's really important because now um, you're getting a, sort of a pre-grade intent, and from there you can modify it and you know, update that metadata as well within the system. So it's having that round trip of the data from what the DP saw, what the DIT intended, and then what the colorist is seeing, and then the editor you know, being able to just make you know, modifications to it. So you can come in without the CDLs and do your own grade as well, and we'll show a, a nice color correction tool outside for you, but this is really for onset prep of color for dailies. So we also do sound sync in our system. It's automatically matched on time code, but you can do quarter frame uh, offsets so that when we hand it back to you, it's sitting right on that proper, but I still call the A-frame kind of an older avid expression, but you know, it's basically set up so that you're not having to deal with the, the slight drifts that may have occurred over time with time code, especially you know, in various cameras that record ProRes or into some of the other uh, compressed media. Over time, they can drift within the course of the day. So we can correct that and update it. Very powerful scrub tools. I like the fact I can play back up to five times with audio. Um, it's really nice to actually whip through dailies without watching every setup, but also you know, make sure things are still in sync. Uh, our color corrector that's in Codex Production Suite is just what I call a, a CDL primary only color corrector. It's red, green, blue for your, your blacks, midtones, and highlights, and has saturation. It conforms to the CDL standard. What doesn't work in CDLs is if people go into Resolve or into you know, other tools and they start putting curves and things where those, those numbers, that math won't translate as you go down to other systems. The CDL process and, you know, has become a, a very universal standard for pre-grading, carrying it through, and then having a reference color uh, for visual effects. Um, however, you know, a commercial, uh, other things where you're, you're doing it all on your own, you want to have more tools than just a CDL tool. So we're showing a, a new plugin for Final Cut Pro called ColorSynth that we'll like to demonstrate for you as well. The system has really um, a nice uh, look store built in where all the looks I can create can be exported as stills, either JPEG or DPX for reference. We have split screen color matching, and the system can play back uh, 6K in real time with the uh, right hardware behind it. So our Codex color corrector is a completely ASUS pipeline. Um, if you haven't heard of ASUS, it's basically um, color science in a box um, so that if you don't have a Technicolor or a Deluxe in your neighborhood, you can kind of still get the same capabilities because ASUS is supposed to standardize color. It's been a long road to get all these cameras to actually talk to each other. Um, so ASUS has seemed to work everywhere except outside of Hollywood because in, in Hollywood they want to like modify things and always push it a little differently. But the last couple of Marvel shows, for instance, um, Guardians of the Galaxy um, was completely done 4K with ASUS. So I'm starting to see the studios go into it. And what's driving it is Dolby Vision and the future of HDR mastering. So these monitors that we've been looking at you know, for the last, you know. 10, 15 years have all been pretty bad. There are Rec. 709 displays that don't represent the full dynamic range. The cameras have been capturing this, and we've been displaying this for years. So now we have monitors that'll start to open up that gamut to us. We can actually see all this vibrance and all this information. And I think this is an important thing for the editorial side. Um, the reason CDLs got invented was when we were transferring film and you know some low paid colorists you know would just do a, a simple grade would go into the edit suite and the director would look at it and be like you know can you do this and can you do that and the editor start tweaking the color and at this point you know the director would fall in love with it he's sitting with the editor for six months looking at this and then they would go back to the finish and the dp would come and say we'll do this doing that and would 
fall apart. They're like, that's not what we have. And the director couldn't see the changes anymore because he had fallen in love with this. So I think having a solution like this now with HDR, it's going to be the same thing. The editors have to have HDR in your room. You have to be able to cut on this footage because you make a completely different creative decision, right? If, if something holds specular detail and you might like fascinate on it over another cut, which you think is in focus and fits well. So if you don't see it, you're not gonna make that editorial decision. So I think HDR grading and having those hooks in your suite is gonna be an important setup, and that's what we're trying to do with color synth and the integration of our uh, color from set. The other quick thing you'll see when you come out and look at it, our system is template-based workflow. And what I mean by that is you can set up all these parameters. I'm making this for the editor. I'm gonna make a, a ProRes 422 version. I'm making a 444 master with no look applied that will match back to. And I'm gonna make an H.264 file because you wanna stream that you know, to your uh, director and let them see it. We can do all that automatically in the background, but set it up such that, you know, as an editor, you don't have to think about it as much. You can have these things pre-set up by, you know, the beginning of the show, and at that point, just hit a button, and it basically does everything. So where most systems are kind of more manual, even though they have project-based, this system is template-based, and you'll see how easy it is to configure things. So we realized this through this workflow, and it's really through a combination of software and hardware. On the left, you can see the various leading cameras in the market from Airy, Canon, you know, Red is very popular uh, late. You know, the GoPro, you can't get rid of it. Um, Phantom's out there, you know, shooting, you know, high speed. Um, and there's not been one production I've ever worked on that worked with just one camera. Um, why there's many alternatives now, and you also give the opportunity for somebody to put a camera in places they couldn't before. And this is why the GoPro does exist, and, and why other smaller cameras are in the mix. Um, it's all about being able to get first person, POV type shots, and, and multiple camera angles, and you know, change up the story. So having multiple angles and multiple cuts is you know, something I'm sure you see all the time. So, but this media, when it comes in, we need to back it up and we need to get it archived and onto something so that it's protected. Um, our system allows us to support not just codex uh, media coming in, but any media from you know, various cameras. So if somebody shoots ProRes on S by S, you can still use our system to bring it in, sync the sound, do everything, and then transport it off. What we show here with this Codex Vault XL series, um, on the shows that are going out there dealing with large format um, cameras, moving a lot of data, we have the ability to clone onto our systems at extremely high data rates, up to 2,500 megabytes per second. And these transfer drives, that um, little black box that's moving between the two units, that's an eight terabyte shuttle drive that automatically mounts uh, you know, upon insertion. So there's no need to have copy time and moving files on and off the system, wasting hours and days. You can basically clone and move that from the set location to the near set where um, it might be my camera truck outside or it might be my post facility. And they can ingest this without having to copy off of a drive. They can just mount this into the vault play it back for the DP or whatever, and then start copying the files off um, through a high-speed network. So our vaults are network attached or uh, directly video attached. So you have 10 gig or 40 gig connectivity to really move data off fast. Um, we also have a, uh, this unit called the Codex Capture Drive and Transfer Drive. That's the same thing as the vault, but the processing now is done through the iMac or through the MacBook Pro. So it still functions the same way, it does everything. Your trade-off might be uh, the size, the footprint, and, and how much data you, you need to move. So for like a second unit um, in there, they could be using our system. And this is what we're showing with our Thunderbolt 3 attached appliance. And then from there, we can deliver the media into Final Cut, into Avid, into any editorial system. We also make a, you know, a desktop reader. Um, these are our transfer drives. They're extremely robust. Um, they support multiple formats. We have our own codex file system, but I can render to these with uh, XFAT and XFS uh, and support our red files. We can render to these with the S XFS. So these, um, these codex capture drive, transfer drive docs, they're Thunderbolt 3 attached, as I say. Um, they loop through there, so you can have a combination daisy chain of the capture drives and multiple transfer drives and be rendering two copies uh, to two locations, sending off both your, your camera native files and your deliverables right to editorial. 
Our XL series is a, um, a GPU-enabled version of that same appliance. It's Linux-based, but it's uh, extremely high speed. It can integrate with LTO archiving. Um, it is really the gateway to the post-production side. Um, Marvel, for instance, has 20 of these units. They deploy them to the post partners working on shows, and they use them in-house to do all their visual effects turnarounds. Um, they used to spend about a quarter million a uh, feature just doing visual effects pulls with post partners. Now they brought it in house and they do them all inside on the codex system. The reason? Because they can track all the metadata from the beginning of the show to the end. And for them, that was just two big things, you know, the, the cost savings of doing it in house, the turnaround time from a request now goes from, you know, hey, I need these pulls done to 20 minutes later, they're done where that used to be about a three-day turnaround. They had to first call the post house and you know, get a work order set up and you know, agree to the payments and the terms, and you know, by the time they got their shots, it was three days later. Now they're able to just upload an EDL, conform it, and pull off uh, open EXR, DPX frames that they can then go right into DI with. So this is a version of the same box, but sort of scaled together with uh, quad LTO tape machines. We have our Media Vault dock, which is a, a transport device to be able to move this data, not just on shuttle drives, but you know, a, a long-term archive with LTFS formatting or ZFS formatting that we can move between, again, near set at the end of the week and, uh, and our post partner. So, Codex provides the, the complete end-to-end -end solution, both hardware and software. Um, Again, what does this matter to the Codex, uh, to the Final Cut Pro world, right? This is, you know, okay, this is cool stuff, but really it's about taking that data that is being shot for your production, backing it up, making sure it's safe and secure, and then making the deliverable as fast as possible for editorial. We have moved into, away from sort of the custom hardware onto the Mac platform over the last two years, and our Codex production suite uh, version 4.5 is uh, a very powerful tool set now. And the entire Guardians of the Galaxy 2 uh, dailies were done on that software, all with the Red Weapon 8K, uh, being able to track custom metadata from GPS position of the camera. Uh, it was very impressive. And uh, all the pulls were done on the software, so the system is, uh, a very production proven type setup. And now that we've moved into the um, Mac OS world, we started to look at new tools, uh, new plugins, things that'll work directly with Final Cut Pro. We're showing off a tool um, called Color Synth, which we'd like you to come take a look at, and a new control surface. So um, for an editor, sometimes, you know, it's, you know, you're not, maybe not a colorist and you can use the mouse and play with these tools, but we've designed something that's different than trackballs. We got convinced people didn't really know how to use them properly, so we designed a new interface that's, uh, I think, easy to understand when you see it. And so come take a look at that for sure. Um, we got some more information about it. We'll give you a hands-on demonstration at Codex Production Suite if you're interested. And if you have any other questions, feel free to ask me outside.